is you're not going to know when someone has concealed carry. No. These people that have gone through training. Yes, they've gone to a uh, a four to six hour class. They've we've laid out the laws. You know where you can, you cannot carry that handgun. What you can, you cannot do. Uh, the ramifications from that. If you do pull that gun out and use it, uh, we've laid all this stuff out. Go, taking them to the gun range, make sure they are proficient in the firearm. So we actually have a great program, and our statistics go back to 1995. License holders are law-abiding citizens. Mm -hmm. They're not the ones that are committing crimes. License holders are actually more law-abiding than police officers. Wow. So when you get a license to carry a handgun here in the state of Texas. You have a lot more responsibility. Exactly. You don't this have is, that license to kill. This is a great responsibility. And with that, you know, with that license comes, you know, a great, great, great responsibility. Right. Absolutely. And so now we got about a minute left. What do you want to say to some of these groups? Because I feel like every movement starts to experience starts to experience a little bit of a splintering off between people have a different way that they want to see things go different direction. And so you'll have groups kind of splinter off and then perhaps do things that don't necessarily look good for the whole second amendment movement. So what do you want to say? We, we need, we need to remember the end game. The end game is to get constitutional carry passed in the state of Texas. We don't need to have little stunts that happened um, earlier this year in January, the Capitol where someone stuck their foot in a state representative's office and that cost us constitutional carry in the state of Texas. Then what the state reps did, they actually instituted panic buttons in the state reps offices. Mm -hmm. And that killed constitutional carry for that entire session. And we almost lost other things. We don't need to have something like that happen. We need to show people that we are responsible gun owners in this state. We're responsible gun owners in this country. We are founded on firearms. And, and you're not going to take my firearm away from me. You know what? You knock on my door to take my gun. I'm going to give you my bullets first. That is what this is about. So let that be no mistake whatsoever. That is what we're talking about. Wow, absolutely. All right. Well, Michael Cargill, thank you so much. Central Texas Gunworks. I'm glad that you were able to get in here and get the last word on this mock mass shooting that took place here in Austin, Texas. I'm sure you could see all the wonderful footage there. Um, and now stick around because Jakari Jackson will be back joining me in studio. You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world, and it's called Shilajit. And it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago, as a matter of fact, this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite. Thousands of years ago, up in the Himalayan mountains and in Tibet. And we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple of years, but we couldn't get an organic form. Right. I mean, so I, let's explain. I mean, we, this stuff's so good, we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, Thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayans and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime- So it's almost like an oil up. from- Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're always claiming out. oil is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But so, so this is a true fossil uh, source. I mean, explain it to me. It is. A, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over seven thousand different medicinal herbs and plants. And it, and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and. And during the summertime and the pressures build it up, it oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it, it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I and I, li I don't expose myself to any chemicals. Infowarslife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> Joining me in studio now is David Knight, and we're going to be discussing this landmark climate agreement that was reached in Paris over the weekend. Now, this is a 31-page agreement, more than 100 countries signed on, pledging to curb climate change. Obama came out immediately uh, touting American leadership in this process and saying, isn't it so great what can happen when countries actually work together? Which was quite telling because, of course, the Secretary John Kerry came out afterward and said, we... we specifically wrote this avoiding having to deal with Congress mm -hmm. because we yeah. knew Congress wouldn't agree on this. So it was a little telling there where sovereignty is headed. We, we've gotten mixed messages from the Obama administration, Lee, and what they said initially, Obama was saying, we have to have something that has teeth in it that can be enforced. And of course, one of the options in the original drafts of this agreement was to have an international organization that would make assessments that would assign penalties, an international tribunal, they call it, run by the United Nations. What they settled on were some very large goals. And we're going to take a look at the numbers. I would They're, they're talking about containing climate uh, uh, temperatures, an increase within uh, two degrees. And of course, mm -hmm. their longer term goal is to keep that down to one and a half degrees. Uh, they're going to go down eventually to zero carbon. So we'll take a look at these numbers. But you know what this really is, Leanne? This is really economic death by degrees. Seriously, right. because what they're doing with this and what we're going to talk about in just a moment, the French elections, these are all efforts at taking down economies, taking down national sovereignty, creating chaos so that they can offer you the solution of a more centralized government as an intermediate step to a world government. But let's take a quick look at the climate agreement, what it is and what it isn't. Uh, first of all, as I point out, they're, they've got this goal of two degrees. Now, they're, they're doing that. That's two degrees centigrade. So it's about three and a half degrees Fahrenheit. That is compared to pre-industrial levels. Ask yourself, where is the database of pre-industrial temperatures that is accurate? Because as Alex Jones uh, interviewed the founder of the Weather Channel, he was saying, hey, you know, when I was younger, we had these thermometers that were mercury, you know, set on wood. He goes, you can't have that kind of accuracy. And of course, we know that it, depending on where you take the measurement, you have heat islands uh, within cities. You have heat islands at airports where they frequently put the thermometers. Uh, as I pointed out on the radio yesterday, we would regularly see as we drove from a, not a large city, Raleigh, North Carolina, to the exurbs where we lived, where it was forested, we would regularly see a three to five degree differential throughout the year mm -hmm. in terms of it being cooler. We see that to a large degree here, even in Austin, as we right. live in the, in the exurbs. So they're going to take this to pre-industrial levels they have models that cannot be verified. That's why so many meteorolog meteorologists do not buy this because they know they're working very hard on, on uh, climate models so they can predict the weather two days in advance. And they're constantly tweaking these things because they're not there. But we're told that we're going to be able to predict this a century in advance and uh, according to these models, which cannot be verified. So they have to appeal to their authority in order to do this. Now, the other part of this, the other big number in this, besides the two degrees and the one and a half degrees centigrade increase, they're going to limit this to, it's going to be $100 billion a year 
of crony climatism, wow. transferring this money. And that is a floor. They're very clear. That is a floor. It is not a ceiling. So you're going to see a massive increase of money being transferred out of Western countries as they use this uh, as a means to try to shut down our income producing capabilities are going to be transferring our wealth. And it's not going to be going to anybody but these fat cats who are the uh, crony capitalists. They'll be setting up the, the new businesses in these yes. third world countries yes. that will be the recipients, of course, of this aid money. Yes, and you've already got Bill Gates and others that are, that are setting up uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the structures to, to absorb all this massive transfer of wealth. Now, Bernie Sanders, of course, is not impressed by this. He thinks that it goes nowhere near enough. Uh, and, of course, really, he does have Bernie Sanders really has the only solution to stopping this, and it's called socialism. Because with that, it can get us down not only to zero carbon, but to a zero economy. And so that's really where we're going. But there is an interesting thing that came out of the uh, uh, out of the conference. And that was John Kerry's address where he had uh, a, a very clearly stated what the real problem is here. And let me read that to you. He said to the conference, he says, the fact is that even if every single American citizen bike to work, carpool to school, use only solar panels to power their homes, if we planted a dozen trees, if we somehow eliminated all of our domestic greenhouse gas emissions, guess what? That still wouldn't be enough to offset the carbon pollution from the rest of the world. And he went on to say, if all the industrialized nations went down to zero emissions, remember what I said, all the industrialized nations went down to zero emissions, it wouldn't be enough. Not when more than 65% of the world's carbon pollution comes from the developing world. To which uh, one of the people that I've, I've worked with in the past, uh, Chris Horner, is an author. He's uh, argued cases before the Supreme Court. He says, what Kerry is doing is inadvertently pointing out that this is all pain, no gain. Right. He won't admit to the pain, and, but he still says that if the state uses its coercive power, forces you into rationing energy, that it would somehow impact the climate. So here's the here's the, the, the good well, news, it though. It still wouldn't impact the, the climate. Exactly. So why not? So here's the good news. The International Climate Justice Tribunal was not put in place. So that's the best thing about it. And as they point out, Mitch McConnell and even Paul Ryan have said that this is going to be dead on arrival. Mm -hmm. uh, Mitch McConnell said the U.S. portion is relying on measures that are being championed by President Obama that were challenged in the courts. And he says before his international partners pop the champagne, they should remember this is an unattainable deal based on a domestic energy plan that is likely illegal, that half of the states have sued to halt, that Congress has already voted to eject. And Paul Ryan echoed that. Uh, of course, he's Speaker of the House. He says this agreement does not bind Congress in any way. We will continue to focus on an energy policy that promotes America's abundant natural resources. So that's the good news. Now, here's where they're ultimately headed, Leanne. They're talking now about a new space race in terms of a crony capitalist uh, competition to see who's going to create the satellite technology to monitor what's going on. Because right. that's, I think, one of the reasons why they didn't come up with uh, an enforcement mechanism at this point is because they want to measure it. And that is going to allow them to pinpoint the sources of greenhouse gases. As we know a technology, right. they're going to take that down to the individual level for right. each and every one of us. And then so what does this have to do with, you know, what's going on across the world with the refugee crisis? Because as we know, yes. it's climate change that is causing this mass migration. Well, what we saw this weekend was very interesting because yesterday they had the French elections. A week earlier, we had seen a, a surprise victory uh, from the National Front in France. That was the... Uh, uh, the, the people who are trying to stop immigration. What we saw yesterday was after the socialists came in third in several areas, uh, they completely removed their candidates and told the socialists left to join with the conservative Republicans. That's the, their name of, of their mm -hmm. party. So the conservative Republicans joined with the socialists left, just as we see here in America, right. the establishment coming together to shut down anybody who would do anything about open and uncontrolled immigration. And of course, they wow. were able to defeat them. And again, Marine Le Pen, who is head of the uh, National Front, she was running as a candidate from Calais, where they're having that horrendous situation with the refugees. So there was a lot of support for her. They won the first round in six out of 13 areas, but they didn't win there. Now, what we saw as reaction to that is Angela Merkel in Germany says, well, we're going to have to significantly reduce the number of immigrants. So we're going to put right. some immigration controls on it. But that's not sincere. At the same oh, time she she's doing that. Champion for exactly. It. But at the same time she's doing that, they are setting up a mechanism. It's the European Border and Coast Guard Agency. The people who are pushing this, the countries who are pushing this, are the French leadership, 
and Angela Merkel in Germany. They're pushing this. And what it's going to do is set up a border patrol that is going to uh, keep the borders open even when the sovereign states don't want it. And as the Financial Times pointed out, this is the biggest transfer of